wow. <laughs> wow, what a crowd. I haven't seen this many people in a single room since the before times. <laughs> I'm so honored to be opening Purpose today, not least because it strikes me that Purpose is a different kind of conference for a new way of doing things. And that's a lot like the movement that I've been involved with in the last couple of years, the community independence movement. It's heartfelt, it's relentlessly positive, and it's human focused. And as one volunteer from Sydney's Northern Beaches told me, it's an active form of hope. She said it was active hope. I think that's a lot like purpose. Purpose, and in, in fact Australia, is set in a very different context from the one we've been trapped in for the last decade. Now each of us has a primary purpose. For me it's climate, and I'm sure it is for many here. Or maybe for you it's health or education or equality. Most of us will remember the despair of bringing so much effort, so much positivity and so much innovation to try to solve problems in these spaces, only to feel that we are working against a system aiming to slow us down. One of my favorite thinkers is Professor Lawrence Lessig of Harvard University. And he often starts his talks with this quote from Henry David Thoreau, that there are a thousand striking, sorry, a thousand hacking at the branches of evil for one who is striking at the root. Each of us has been hacking away at our primary purpose. We all know how that feels, trying to make the world a better place. But if our democracy is sick, if our democracy is corrupted, then much of our effort will be in vain. A change maker recently told me, he said, democracy is a climate strategy. And that just hit me so hard. Democracy is a climate strategy. And if you think about it, anything we do, democracy is a strategy. Lessig makes the point that a health, healthy democracy might not be our biggest priority, but it is our first priority. Without it, we can't succeed in making the change that we want to see. Now, for too long, Australia has been stuck in a two-party system, in a duopoly focused on power without purpose. For too long, uh, our politics has been struck, stuck in a rut. I spent about 15 years trying to, trying to change the system, most of it trying to change the system from within using facts and logic. But I made little progress. I tried to make this change from within, but I was sent out. And then I came across a movement of people who had been working very quietly, striking at the root. In 2012, in Northern Victoria, the people of Indi came together with an innovative new model of organization. The kitchen table conversations gave a, uh, gave a non-partisan approach to gathering people together and finding out the shared values and the shared vision for the people, uh, the people of that electorate. Once they realized that they, were, that they were agreed that they weren't getting well represented, they formed the Voices of Indi and they selected Kathy McGowan to run and she was elected in 2013 and again in 2016. In 2018, when Malcolm Turnbull was chewed up and spat out by his own party, uh, the community had the choice to elect Karen Phelps, a, a local independent, and they rejected the offerings of the major party system. And when Julia Banks joined, uh, joined the crossbench after rejecting the, the, the Liberal Party later that year, for a brief moment in time, we had a minority government and the crossbench worked together to be the backbone of parliament, the conscience of parliament, and pass the Medivac legislation that gave critical medical attention to refugees stuck in offshore detention. In the weeks before the 2019 election, I was inspired by these strong independents. And having failed to achieve the change from within, I started Climate 200 dedicated to giving these independents a chance to level up against the major parties. In 2019, the electorate of Warringah chose Zali Stegel and, and, uh, and Indi elected Helen Haynes to take over from, or to carry the torch from Kathy McGowan, who retired. And in the, at, and in the two years since, we saw, we saw Zali Stegel keep climate change 
front and center in the national discussion at a time when, when neither major party wanted to discuss it. We saw Helen Haynes do much the same for a National Integrity Commission. Communities around the country were inspired by what they saw. They loved what they saw and they wanted some of it for themselves. They started to form campaigns and each campaign started locally, run locally, driven by locals. There was no rule book, no franchise, but they collaborated across communities. Around the country, a wave started building and a wave that was built on the frustration. We had the response to fires was sitting on the beach in Hawaii. The response to floods was picture opportunities. And as we entered our second year of lockdowns, when vaccines would have been our ticket to freedom, our Prime Minister told us it was not a race while he himself was vaccinated um, uh, before anyone else. And then I think one of the most significant events uh, of this whole last electoral cycle started in early 2021 with the announcement of Grace Tame as Australian of the Year. Many women around the country felt emboldened, felt safe to tell their stories. Brittany Higgins, Chanel Contos, uh, the, the, we saw the Christine Holgate affair, Julia Banks wrote her political memoir. All of these culminated in the, the March for Justice in uh, March 2021. The stories were harrowing, but what was even more disturbing was the government's poor response to it. I think by the middle of the year, we were all grace tame. We were all giving side eye to the government. So, so many millions of Australians were white hot with anger, white hot with anger, women and men, that the government was neglecting to hear the story about the treatment and safety of women in Australia. And another amazing thing happened, a disruption. Before, before the pandemic, only very few strange ones of us had, <clears throat> had Zoom on our computer and spent much time online. But within a month of the pandemic, all of Australia was, was online, learning how to, learning how to, uh, at, at schools, our kids in even dance lessons on side, music on, on, online, uh, music lessons, grandmothers meeting their, meeting their grandchildren. We learned how to organize uh, our lives and organize our communities online. This slide is the Community Independence Conference flyer. Uh, February last year, the Community Independence Project, which grew out of Kathy McGowan's work in Indi, organized a conference. They thought 50 people would turn up to hear about how to run these community campaigns. They had 350 people from over 80 communities. And while the communities started building this movement, with the help of a small but kick-ass team, I started building Climate 200 into a massive crowdfunding campaign. 11,200 donors who were committed to leveling the playing field so that communities would have a fighting chance against the massive and entrenched party machines. 11,200 donors from around the country, from every walk of life, from every one of Australia's 151 electorates. A third of our donors were from rural and regional areas, and together we raised a war chest of $13 million. By the time the election came round, nearly 19,000 volunteers across the country, and I'm sure there are many here today, were out door knocking, waving core flutes, handing out how to vote cards. They made, they made um, uh, nearly 63,000 direct peer-to-peer -peer phone calls and knocked on 166,000 doors. And together, the entire movement brought together almost, or brought together more than $20 million to make sure that the campaigns had a fighting chance. And so it was that communities, the communities around the country, supported by donors around the country, struck at the very root of Australian politics. Seven MPs lost their seats to community independence. Seven MPs who had consistently voted against climate action. They'd voted against integrity measures and they'd failed to prioritise the women of Australia. These seven MPs were replaced with promising new representatives, the result of our collective and active hope. Now, most of you know much of the story of the 2022 election, and I'm sure, as I said, that many here were part of it in some way. I've given my account in a new book, Big Teal, which is, uh, which is available outside, and I wrote it to explain this, how this movement, a 10-year-old uh, movement, became an overnight success. 
I wrote it to explain Climate 200's role within it and what inspired me to work with the team that helped, helped accelerate this movement. I hope that this book might inspire two or three or five uh, other new communities to, to join into this movement. Uh, to, to every one of these initiatives starts off as two or three people sitting over a coffee or a glass of wine and quickly grows into the kind of movements we saw at the last federal election. So on the 22nd of May, we woke up to a very different country. Seven extraordinary new independents entered parliament and they've already made a great impact. They've improved the climate and integrity bills and they've brought new issues uh, onto the floor of the parliament. This work is starting to pay off. The biggest block to the kind of social innovation that we all want to achieve has now been removed. But as exciting as this is, and it really is exciting, our job is far from done. Australia is still a massive climate laggard. We are still not pulling our weight in climate action. The fossil fuel industry, for example, sponsored the glitzy midwinter ball in Parliament House. They still have their tailons into the Australian body politic. And the Liberal Party doesn't seem to have learnt, learnt the lessons of the election. Far from, far from understanding that so many Australians voted uh, on, 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 the, on the basis of climate and integrity. Peter Dutton shortly after the electorate, electorate telegraphed that the climate wars are far from over. And while the Labor Party has made great strides uh, and is certainly moving things forward, they're no angels. We all know that the International uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and the International Energy Association have said that we need to stop new fossil fuel extraction. Not stop the industry overnight, but stop expanding the industry. And when this was put to the Prime Minister shortly after the election, he took it off the table immediately saying that it would recklessly shut down, uh, sh shut down our economy. <clears throat> the gaslighting of Australia continues. The government has backed in the Scarborough gas project off West Australia's coast, has backed in fracking in the Northern Territory, and uh, is right behind efforts to drill for oil and gas off Victoria's Great Ocean Road. So we need to climate-proof Australia. We've set ourselves a great, big, hairy, um, <laughs> a, great, a big, hairy, audacious goal. We want to double the number of independents in parliament. We want to double the size of the crossbench. Why? Because in every election, the votes for the major parties, the primary votes, are going down. We want to see in Australia where no matter who wants to run the country, they have to negotiate with the community's priorities of climate, integri integrity, and gender equity. Now in six campaigns around the country, the, independent, the community independent came second. And at the community independence conference in, in August, more than 100 communities were represented. There is real mo momentum out there and it is growing. So now, what do we do with this climate for change? Well, I want to give you three, I want to set three challenges for you. I want to ask you, I want to challenge you to get involved at the upcoming state campaigns. It's, it's six weeks until Victoria goes to the polls, and four months after that, New South Wales goes to the poll. We want to keep the teal wave running through Australia. We want to keep the teal wave going so it is in the best shape it can be at the next federal election, and we also want the issues of climate, integrity, and gender equity to be addressed at the state levels. I want to encourage you to donate to the independents, uh, the quality independents that are running. They're up against a massive publicly funded wall that makes it almost impossible, but not entirely with your help, to get into power. We've done the hard work. We've gone out and found strong independents that are values aligned and have a chance of winning. And we encourage you to go to our website where you can find the method to donate directly to their campaigns. And lastly, I want to encourage you to, to come along for our three-year three journey, our three-year big, hairy, audacious goal. I would like, um, want to encourage you to, to visit our website and watch this video of Byron Fay, our executive director, has put our vision out in full. 
And with that, I'd like to hand over to Sally Hill. Sally was an amazing member of our team uh, at Climate 200 during the election. She was part of making this change, uh, this change to Australia. And I know that she will now uh, uh, come and inspire you with all the things that are possible from this conference, Purpose 2022. Thank you.